everyone. Uh, today we got another webinar for you guys. Today we got um, a topic about how to get on the cloud and about the cloud overall. We have Jose Zavala from Houston, Texas here with us. Hey guys, how y'all doing today? How you doing? How you doing, Alberto, man? Doing good? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're doing good. Yeah, I had some coffee. Uh, I feel energized now. Perfect. perfect. Uh, how's your morning going? Good, man. Good. I'm excited. Um, Really looking forward, you know, this is something I love to talk about. I talk about it all the time on all my social media. So, you know, to be able to sit here and kind of, instead of just throwing a bunch of ideas and stuff to really get <laughs> like a nice guide for everybody, I think, you know, I'm excited about that. So, Yeah, man, actually, to actually go in depth, right, and kind of and talk about what you love to talk about, how you said. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So let me go ahead and get my screen up. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and take the screen and uh, j jump right into it whenever you're ready. Okay. Do I have, uh, you guys see my PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, you're Perfect. good. Okay. All right, guys, successful planning for cloud adoption. So we're going to give you a, uh, essentially a guide, a how to, to do, to have a successful, how to plan for a successful cloud adoption, because it's not, it's not a hard task, but it's not an easy task by any means. Um, so that's something that, you know, like I said, we've got this guide we're going to provide you, and that way you guys can kind of follow it and go along with it uh, on on there. So a little bit about me. Like Alberto said, I am Jose Zavala. The, uh, I am uh, owner, founder and owner of ZTX Advisors, if my little clicker will work. Uh, you see there, my beard's a little bit trimmer today just because I, uh, you know, Back then, I was trying to grow it out a little bit more. I got a little bit untamed. My daughter would pull it like that, and it kind of it would hurt sometimes. So decided to trim it a little bit. But yeah, ZTX Advisors are based out of Houston, Houston Texas. We are a off. Uh, we offer bookkeeping. We offer uh, taxes, tax planning, advisory services. You know, you name it, all that. And the app advisory services for our clients. So we help them making sure that they make the transition to the cloud. What does that mean for them? How does that look for them? And making sure we choose the right applications for them to use to help them with their business. So, so I have a question for everybody watching this presentation. What if I told you you could take a family vacation right in the middle of tax season without sacrificing your work, your clients, your family time, and your mental health? And I know some of you are probably thinking like, oh, get out of here, man. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm going to show you how the cloud can make this happen, guys. So for those of you that don't know, there is a fundamental shift in the accounting industry going on. And before we get into it, what I want you guys to do, I want you to do a quick exercise with me. So those of you that are watching, I want you to close your eyes and imagine yourself. You're overlooking, you, you are on vacation. You're overlooking the beach. You go out on the patio, you've got a nice cup of coffee, you've got your you know, bagel, your donut, your uh, whatever it is that you're having, maybe your little omelet, and you're overlooking, you feel the breeze coming in, you see the beautiful ocean, whether it's Mexico, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, wherever you are, oh, excuse me, and you look down, it's 8.30 in the morning, and you're like, okay, I've Feeling good, it's, it's, it's either a little bit early, a little bit late, depending on, you know, what your schedule's like. And then you look at the date and it's April 1st. And okay, I know, I know some of you are probably like, get out of here, that, that, that's impossible. Well, you know what? I'm gonna show you that it actually is possible to be able to do that. Wake up on a beach in the middle of tax season. So with this shift in the accounting industry, we're seeing a lot of, uh, firms making that transition to the cloud, converting everything to the cloud. You know, I have firsthand experience on doing that. When I first started my business, that was the thing I wanted to do is I wanted to work on the cloud. Uh, you know, I wanted to work from anywhere uh, at any time and not have to worry about being in an office or being, you know, at my desk because that's the only place I can get some work done. And by doing that, you know, I've been able to set that up and now my, my firm runs fully on the cloud and it's been great because I can work from anywhere. I can do anything, you know, and 
a big part, of, I guess a, a big thing that, that, that really opened my eyes to that was I, we actually had some family in Monterrey reach out to us asking us about uh, they're gonna, uh, my niece is going to have her first communion and they wanted my wife to be the godmother. Okay, not a problem. You know, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, for me, family's first. Family's the most important thing to me. That's what I always told myself. I'm never going to miss out on something because of work. I will make it work. But I did, you know, and, and they told me it's in the middle, the first week of April. And I just like immediately my anxiety kicked in. And I was like, oh, well, you know, whew. Yeah, I'm sure you guys feel that the little chill behind your back. Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get this done? How is this going to happen? And you know, I, I, I had that and I had to take a step back and I was like, hey, okay, first, relax, calm down. You've got the systems and the processes in place to do this. You can do this. And after kind of a take a step back, I'm like, you know what? I can. So instead of just going for that day and coming back, you know, so to avoid any friction with my clients or anything, I was able to go for a week and be able to. Uh, so what I ended up doing was working during the day. I told everybody, leave me alone. Don't even look at me. I got my work done as, it, it, equally as efficient as if I was at home. And I was able to, in the afternoons, go check out La Cola del Caballo, go check out you know the mountains that are out there, check out the great food that's over there, and, and spend some time with family. And even one, uh, two of those days, I was able to even stop work a little bit early to enjoy a little bit more time with them. You know, And all that was able to be done just efficiently on the cloud. You know, my 8879s, I got my tax returns done. Sent it to them, everybody electronically to sign. Uh, we all know for you to, to electronically sign them, sign them, they have to be uh, KBA, which is knowledge-based authentication. So they need to identify their, you can't just use any service provided to sign. Um, but uh, the one I have uses uh, Citrix, right? Right, right, share Citrix. And so that's what I use. and. Works great. Send it to them. Send them their tax returns through the portal. They were able to sign everything. Get the agency that's electronically signed. I was able to electronically file. Not a problem. You know that that's and that's something that again I told myself from the beginning I wanted to be able to do. And it's a big you know for me family comes first. That's something I I scream at the top of my lungs with my clients. I let them know family always comes first. So if you have, we have a meeting and you, and you can't make it and it's a family emergency, or it's just something to do with family, don't even worry about it. There's nothing, you know, family comes first. Same thing with my staff. I always tell them something with family. If you can't make, do something, if you can't get something done and it's something with, with family, not a problem, you know? And the good thing is I, I trust them. Because they've, they've shown that they can be trusted. And so that's why I, can, I know that whenever they say, hey, I, this, this, there's this problem, if it's family, don't even worry about it. So, I, you know, and because of this, this transition to the cloud that I was able to do, you know, we're actually for my fifth year anniversary, we're going to Hawaii uh, next week, which I'm pretty excited about. But I have a lot of work to do. So, again, same situation. Get some work done in the mornings. Uh, and then, you know, afternoons, evenings, spend some time with my wife and really go and enjoy myself and, and not have to feel guilty about getting behind or, or having to play catch up when I come back. You know, same same situation. We were just at ZeroCon last week and I was able to get some work done there, which it still set me behind some, but not as much as it probably should have, which was nice because I was able to just open my laptop, get some work done and go ahead and go. You know, now, now this young lady right here in the picture, I don't know about that. My computer will always fall off. I know myself. It's going to go in the water. It's going to get destroyed. I, kudos to her because she's a little bit more brave than I am when it comes to that. So, all right. The three key points to make this shift happen are going to be your process, your people, and technology. So your process. Evaluate your internal processes. What does that look like? How do those look like? Your people. Ensuring the right staff is in the right area, making sure that you have the right people doing the correct, in the correct roles, maximizing their strengths and technology, leveraging the technology that's out there. Making sure you have the right applications that you need in order to help you grow and not just the applications 
because they're the biggest or you know the best in the industry. No, get the ones that work for you. So now that I painted this big picture about what cloud accounting is and how you can essentially travel the world without missing a beat, you know, um, th th I mean, that's why you guys are all here. You guys are all here to see, well, how can I make that transition from uh, maybe a paper firm, non-cloud to a cloud firm and you know, you're here. And the first and most vital piece of the transition is gonna be change management. The main factors to take to account for our pillars that are our pillars of change management is going to be communication, training, and sponsorship. Communication is very important. Communicating with your staff, communicating with your vendors, communicating with your clients, communicating with your partners. You want to make sure that your vision that you have is is the vision that everybody is on board and they share. And the key word there is everybody is on board with it. They all need to understand what it is and, and, and get as excited as you are because this change to the cloud is great. You know, we'll talk about how that's gonna affect some staff as well in a very positive way a little bit later. But communicating this is, is, is vital. Training, making sure you and your staff are fully trained. There's no point in going and buying the nicest software out there if, you, if you're not going to know how to use it or if, you're, if your staff is not going to fully utilize how to use it or if you can't teach your clients how to use it. You know, then, then at that point, you're just wasting money and it's just, it, it makes it kind of not worth it. You know, and that's something that we ran into a little bit was when I first started, I went and got all these softwares because I was told, yeah, you know, this is going to be good. You're going to be able to sell this and everything. And came to my clients and was like, hey, I've got, I can, this, I can provide you with this. I can provide you with that. And they looked at me and they go, you don't need any of that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, again, training to make sure you're trained the right way and sponsorship. That is figuring out who is taking ownership of what part of this adoption to ensure that the right people are focusing on the right tasks. So you want to make sure that if you've got somebody that's, that's going to make sure to make the transition to being paperless, that they understand what their role are, what their role is, what's expected of them, and that essentially they can get it done. So our process, guys. Process is the first step. First key point to make this happen. Technology allows for more efficient processes. I want you guys to, to, to read that sentence. That's why I'm sitting here describing it, you know, reading it to you guys, because it does. Technology allows for more efficient processes. So for me, how does that translate into actual action, into actual actionable items? Well, for me, Internally, we would spend about an hour, hour and a half in the life cycle of a client trying to get a proposal done, engagement letters, chasing payment, and going to either pick up payment from them, and it's just, it became a big ordeal. Or even then, again, chasing payments when clients didn't want to pay me because they didn't want to pay until after the work was done. So I was like, you know, for me, for me, it was very, I wanted to create proposals for my clients and to appear more professional to them, to let them know, hey, I'm the real deal. And I wanted to ensure that they each got their engagement letters with the proper verbiage to that equals to uh, the work that I was going to perform for them. The problem with that was it would take me forever. It took me about an hour, hour and a half to do all that because I was very, I was a stickler to make sure my proposals were right. Enter practice ignition. Practice ignition is, an, is a proposal, in, proposal software that you can create a proposal on the fly. You create your templates. It creates engagement letters. It collects payment for your clients and you can even make it to where they have to pay you a deposit or have to pay you all up front before they can accept the proposal. When I implemented that, that hour and a half per client 
brought me down to 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That's a huge shift and change. Huge shift and change. You know, and if you guys are interested in seeing how practice ignition works, we actually have a video on our YouTube in Spanish about how it works. And we're working on doing one in English to, to be able to do it. And of course, reach out to them as well. They'll be more than happy to, to help in English. So how do you identify a good process? Guys, we map out first, before we identify a good process, we need to map out our processes. How do we work from beginning to end? And we need to be truthful with ourselves. We can't, if, if there's a stop gap somewhere or if there's a problem where we know that this is, takes us a long time because either my staff is, is inefficient about doing this or maybe the client's inefficient, we need to be, we need to make sure to be truthful with ourselves and map out the process from the beginning of the life cycle to the end of the life cycle. And what you, you may notice is you may be doing a lot of mundane or menial tasks that you did not realize you were doing. And that's okay. That's okay. That's the whole point of mapping out a process because when you map it out, then you can see what's going on and be able to identify those areas of improvement that we can do. Maybe automate some of those things, make things a little bit more efficient, tighten it up a little bit more to save you a little bit of time. That's the point of it. But how, the question, how do you identify a good process? For me, what's worked for me internally has been leveraging the zero community. What is the zero community? So Zero has done a very good job of empowering their bookkeepers, their accountants, and give it, and creating this, this just large community of collaboration where, yes, we're all competitors and we're all trying to go after the same clients, but at the same time, we all work together to help each other grow our own businesses. So if, if you have a certain vertical, that you go after, let's say nonprofits, and you're just starting off, and that's who you want to work with because you're passionate about that and everything. Reach out to somebody that's doing it. Hey, how are you doing? What's your process look like and everything? Nine times out of ten, they are more than happy to help you and give you advice on what you need to do, where to start, and everything. I mean, that that that's for me has been the the game changer for me. And a prime example of that is Jay Kimmelman, the uh, national ambassador. He was here for the Zero, uh, the Zero Road Show, which we had here in Houston. And I was telling him I was having a little bit of trouble with sales tax. And there was a few uh, apps I wanted to reach out to. And he told me that what I need to do is talk to one he uses is tax jar, that he was very happy with it and to reach out to them. And so I did. And now I'm very happy with it. Worked out great. But... I do want to make it perfectly clear that what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So a good example of that is for you guys that prepare tax returns and you have your clients come and sit down, you'll have your annual meeting, you talk, house family and everything, and they sit there and wait while you prepare your taxes. If they have a Schedule C and they bring you bank statements, you may just inputting everything into Excel and, and, and you know, getting the uh, financial statement ready so that you can drop that into the, the tax return. My system won't work for that because none of my clients come into my office. I work, all, I work virtually with all my clients. I use an application called Auto Entry, which I upload bank statements, downloads the CSV file for me. So I upload the bank statements. It reads all the information, downloads an a, a Excel file for me. I take that Excel file upload it into zero, take that information, do bank rules, do cash coding, do uh, kind of all these little features that, that zero has and get my financials in order. And then I go ahead and prepare the tax return and then present the client with a nice looking set of financials, which they love. But that's not, that's not going to work for you because auto entry takes a couple hours turnaround time to give me that information. So if you have a client in in house, there may be there are other solutions that you could use that are more immediate to help you out. Discuss how people can help in the identification. This is where you need to have an open and judgmental, free conversation about the processes with your with your staff, with your team. What does it mean? Uh, open and judgmental, free. 
hear them out. You may think that everything is looking good, but maybe they're just doing a really good job of hiding a lot of these inefficiencies from you. That's where you want to have that conversation with them. And hey, guys, what's working? What's not working? What can we improve on? And give it, because then they feel empowered because they feel like they're actually contributing to, to the firm and their voices is heard. And it makes life easier for them to be able to work a little bit more efficient, which means they can get stuff done a little bit quicker, which means they can take on a little bit more work. Win-win for everybody. You need to also talk about the tech and how it can help you and understanding how it can help you. The Zero Marketplace has over 800 applications on there. It is a big, really big, just a lot. It's overwhelming information, overwhelming. And it's just making sure you understand what tech works for you and what tech and not just going with what's fancy or what's top rated because just because it's top rated, it may not work for you. That happened to me a couple of times. There were some smaller apps that actually worked a lot better for me and I was happy with that. So being, being on the cloud and talking about technology and you, it, it, it equates to being paperless. What is paperless? It's taking all of your work papers, all your information, moving them from file cabinets into these different cloud-based solutions. So no longer, and what does that do for you? A few things. One, you save money on rent because you no longer need the space to have to take care of the file cabinets. Two, when you're searching for a file, if it's accidentally misplaced, you're gonna spend probably an hour or two, and I tell you from experience, trying to find that file, and it just ends up being, you end up spending more time finding a file than you actually do preparing a tax return or, or you know, finding a W-2 for a client that they need for their, uh, to close on a house. Using these paperless solutions are great because you can organize it just like a file cabinet in there, but you have access to it 24 seven, as long as you have an internet connection. And a lot of these applications as well have apps on their phone. So you can actually pull up a work paper if you need to. So if you're on the bout on the go, you can pull up a work paper on your phone, pull it up and send it to that client. Easy peasy. Every accounting process can be paperless. Anything from bookkeeping to sales tax to tax to uh, tax returns to audits, all of those can be paperless. Everything can be paperless. We personally use Office 365. Uh, we use SharePoint within Office 365 to store all our papers, but there's several different solutions. Zero has a zero files in it. There's a, a Dropbox, box.com, you know, there's several different paperless solutions out there that you guys can use to store your work papers. And uh, on top of that, you get, you get the efficiencies and you get, the, you get to essentially try to eliminate where these work papers are stored. You also need to make sure to utilize your team correctly. Make sure you utilize them so that you get this, so this gets accomplished correctly. So again, leveraging your team, leverage, leveraging their strengths and making sure that you're putting people, you have maybe some people that are a little bit more tech savvy than others, put them, make them kind of the, the, the leader of this, take ownership in this project and let them run it, be the project manager for this project. Or maybe a certain, maybe within this adoption, you, you make them a, you're in charge of figuring out how we're going to get all our work papers from here into this new system, how it's gonna be organized and everything. And the most important thing, guys, is again, I wanna reiterate, high-tech tools are not needed. We don't need high-tech tools for this. This is not something, you don't need to go buy big, fancy enterprise edition softwares. You know, there, I've listed a couple earlier that you can use that work just as well, just as well. So touching on this paper list, Let's look at the life of an invoice here. So we've got a supplier, correct? 
They prepare the invoice, print it out, get it to the mailroom. Mailroom sends it out. Takes a couple of days, gets back to the customer's mailroom. They have to sort it out. They've got their AP per, uh, their AP person in there, puts it in AP, accounts payable. Takes several days, sometimes can take weeks, depending on how big it is and how big the, the company is and how much they process as far as uh, payables. And it takes a couple of days. Why is that important? Because it takes a couple of days for you to get paid. It takes longer to get paid. Now you're having to wait on the mail to send it out. You're having to make sure that they get it. And if they don't get it, you have to follow up with them, resend it to them. And, and it is just, again, just more time on top of more time on top of more time. By adopting uh, the cloud and using the cloud model, you can actually eliminate all that in between and send that electronic invoice directly to your customer. That way they get it quicker, easier, and they can pay quicker, which will help with our, with, with our cash flow and our clients' cash flow, which is the, that, that's the most important thing that we wanted to ensure. And as you see here, all these tasks, most of these tasks are removed or changed by doing this electronic invoice. You don't necessarily have to get rid of staff. You can move them into more higher value roles or move it into different roles, which is again, leveraging your people to do what they're strong. And, and part of this is making sure you review and remove all redundancies. So you wanna make sure to take a look at, you have your process mapped out. We mapped out our process. We're looking at, okay, we're doing a, a specific item over and over and over and over. How can we remove that? So for us, we would onboard a client and I would have to go into zero, create the new contact in zero. I would have to go into our project management system, create the new project management in there. And, and it was just kind of a, okay. And then I had to create in, in our work papers or, a new file in our work papers and put everything in there. And it's just, you know, it took a little bit of time. And so after we mapped out our processes and took a good look at it, we were like, okay, how can we automate some of this stuff? How can we move some of this? And we were able to do that using applications like Zapier. And we'll talk a little bit about Zapier in a little bit. But so the question is, how do we transition to new processes? Well, for me, you start with having, again, conversations. Conversations with staff, conversations with vendors, conversations with colleagues, and the zero community. The zero community, again, guys, I, I, want, I can't stress this enough. Like It has been tremendous for me as, as my help, and they've done a very good job as far as building one and helping, you know, a very collaborative effort. You know, we, we have uh, zero events that I love to go to, and there's always people asking questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? And I'm asking questions. Well, how do you do this? And, you know, we learn from each other. We bounce ideas from each other, and it's been a lot of help. And so how do we get people in the right roles? Again, play to their strengths. Use their strengths to their advantage. Do you have somebody a little bit more tech savvy? Put them maybe to manage some of these more technical roles. You have somebody that's better client-facing? Okay, maybe have them have that conversation with the client about this, working with the tech savvy person. You use your people to the right roles, just making sure that you understand what they're good at and, and, and using that to your advantage. So removing all these redundancies is essentially automating some of these processes building this automation into tech processes. And I can talk about automation all day. I love automation. This is where Zapier comes in. So Zapier is a, is a program that if two other softwares do not integrate directly with each other, Zapier will build that, that connection for you. And so it'll create what's called the Zap. So to give you guys an example, when when we send our client a, 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 a proposal in a contract inside practice ignition, once they sign it and they fill out the credit card information or the ACH transfer information, and then we, you know, they, they sign it and we're good to go. 
From there, we take uh, Zapier, it creates a zap to where it sends the clients an email, a welcome email that says, welcome to the family, we're so happy to have you, we're really excited to be working with you, and here is uh, here's a quick video on how to how to work with us, how you know how we work, how, how what we expect from you, what you can expect from us, kind of a quick intro, and then here's a link to schedule an onboarding call so we can go ahead and get you fully onboarded from there. It automatically gets sent out. I don't have to go in and type all that information out anymore. It's it's an email, it's a template I have, and it works out. It works out perfectly. Using the right people again, talking about internal or external, and, and there may be times where maybe something's out of your scope, and you may have to bring somebody in. There, there are there are people out there who who specialize in app advisory services. So maybe you instead of taking them, you don't have the time. You may have the capital, but don't have the time to implement something or really do your research. Reach out to some of these app advisory firms. They'll come in. They'll look at how you work your processes and be able to give you a list of okay it looks these are your your different options this is where you want to go and to make sure you choose a technology is good for you again i need to stress this because i made that mistake of trying to choose the fanciest one out there and it just doesn't work you know you it, it, let me rephrase that not that it doesn't work, it's just it may not work for you. It may not be the solution for you. Just because it's a solution for other people doesn't necessarily mean it's a solution for you. Not that it's a bad solution, it just maybe doesn't fit into how you work or your processes. So that's something I want, again, don't go out and buy big and fancy. Do your research. Make sure if the big and fancy is exactly what you need, then by all means, go for it. I think that, you know, do it. But it's just, instead of just kind of getting glossy eye that you see a bunch of apps let me go with the top one no 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 do a little bit of research and make sure that it does fit into your mold so our people we talked about processes now we're our people people we can't do this without people you know we, we we can only grow so much as ourselves before we have to start utilizing people so flexibility is possible i'll tell you this this girl's a lot more flexible than i am <laughs> And it looks like she's about to do yoga. I do a little bit of yoga every once in a while, but uh, yeah, I'm sure she, yeah, not as good as she is. But I would tell you this, flexibility is very important. It was very important to me. I wanted to be able to work from anywhere. I didn't want to be tied down to an office. I didn't want to have to go in, drive 45 minutes to an office to sit there and work. And then if I had to work late, I wouldn't be able to come home. This was possible with this cloud adoption that I did. And you can do it too. You can work from anywhere. You can work from Starbucks. You can work from uh, a beach. You can work from up in the cabins. As long as, well, as long as you have internet connection, you can work. And the most important part too is as you start to grow, you start to bring on team members. Okay, you start to bring on team members and you want to look at the talent pool and you want to look at, you want to be able to, to produce some of the best talent. You want to be able to recruit some of the best talent. And how do you do it? How do you bring in staff? You know, I, I know that's in this industry, that's something that trying retaining top talent and trying to find and retain top talent is, is not necessarily, it's, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but I know it's something that that's worrisome and it could be a problem at this point. I'm not sure. All I know is that, you know, you want to grow, and you want to keep growing your firm and you're doing well and you want to be able, how do you do that? How, how, you know, how do you find the best possible candidates? You can utilize remote or part-time workers, guys. This is a great option for people that are growing but can't quite afford a full-time person yet. The good thing is you're able to cast a wider net because you're using part-time or remote workers. So what does remote workers mean? It could be a worker that maybe lives across the city, across the state, across the country, or across the world. You could, let's say you have um, some family in, 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 a, in another country. So let's say you have a, a, cousin in, in, a cousin in Mexico, or a cousin in, 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 uh, in Honduras or El Salvador. 
and, and they want to they want to they want to work they want to learn accounting and, but they want to stay in their home country so you can you would be able to bring them on and train them using using things like zoom what we're using now to be able to communicate with them and they're able to log into uh these cloud accounting solutions like zero to be able to work and access work papers and everything and you'll be able to utilize these remote workers from anywhere in the world and you're able to take on clients from anywhere in the world as well so if you have experience working with clients in mexico you know guatemala honduras uh, argentina wherever it is you can work with them and you'll be able to work with them because especially if they're using cloud technologies like zero part-time workers are great too because for me part-time has been amazing because i've been able to still get the help i need but i don't have to i can't afford to bring somebody on full time and so what what worked out for me a great resource that worked that, that i like that i've been using is stay-at-home parents so a lot of these stay-at-home parents have had great careers, amazing careers, but they decided to stay at home. They made the decision to stay at home, and, and that's, that's great. But they maybe still want to, to work some, or they still want to, to, you know, or maybe the kids are growing up a little bit. They want to step slowly back into the workforce. This is perfect for them because, you know, you can provide them whatever hours, whatever capacity they have to work, and they help you out. So. For me, one of my team members, my, my go-to, Morgan, she's a stay-at-home mom. Works from home and has an incredible background. And I'm able to leverage that background that she has working at some of these big consulting firms now that we're working here together. And my other, my other part-time worker is an intern who's in college in Dallas, which is about four hours from Houston. And we're able to work with her and we have uh, – daily huddles to make sure okay where are you at and, and how are you doing and then we have weekly meetings of okay tell me where you're at and you know training sessions and everything all virtually through here which has been great we record them we post them internally for everybody to see so she can see so that they can go back and say okay this is where we're at this is what it looks like and this is how to go from point a to point b building out those internal processes and those procedures now, the state of the accounting industry is 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 first a, a lot of a lot of firms built their their, their uh, firms on compliance, and this is a little bit about how where the industry is moving to from compliance to, from, to simple advisory to complex advisory. You know, uh, compliance is going to be your sales tax returns, your your year end tax returns, maybe your outsourced bookkeeping, after the fact bookkeeping, things like that, other tax compliances. And, and there, people have built some successful firms doing compliance work. But with the advent of the cloud and utilizing cloud technologies, you can actually move into some of these more advanced roles, simple advisory, so software implementation budgeting app advisory performance benchmarking so performance benchmarking is is you you take a look at what the industry is for your specific company and compare how they're doing compared to the national average of what a successful company is supposed to be and that way you can make sure okay well these are the metrics you're not hitting these are this is where you're not doing what you need to be doing and this is all available because you have real-time data coming in from these cloud solutions. These bank feeds that are coming in on a daily basis, you're able to reconcile them and you're good to go. Then you can move into a complex advisory services where you really start to, to hone in on your expertise. And that's HR advisory, startup mentoring, international affairs so let's say you you worked uh, as an auditor in, in in mexico and then you come to the u.s and, and you're an accountant here and you learn tax law here or you, you did taxes in mexico and came here perfect you would be the perfect candidate for these companies that maybe have operations in mexico or mexican companies that have operations in the u.s you'll be able to service both and you will be the expert because you know both sides you know, I know U.S. tax law, don't know any other country. I've done a Canadian tax return, but uh, don't know any other. <laughs> so that's, you know, this allows us to be able to move into more complex advisory roles 
which provides more value to our clients and moves us from just, oh, it, it's my it's my accountant, it's my tax preparer, just from uh, and it moves us from being just an expense in their eyes to more of a valued partner. That deeper relationship we have with them, with them we can help them help grow their business and creates again a deeper, more valuable relationship, which leads to which then leads to more referrals, maybe higher fees because these are more kind of you know specialized items and, and and it works out great. I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. Your client's happy because you're actually part of the team now and not just somebody they talk to once a year. And you, you know, you maybe get to build a little bit more for, you get to build more for some of your stuff because you're focusing on just moving from compliance to more other things. And it provides a lot more value to everybody. So motivating as a cloud accounting firm. So what the heck does that even mean, guys? Well, I do want to say here, traditional incentives for your staff do not work in this model. You can't motivate your staff the same way you used to based on the billable hour. So if you make the, the adoption to the cloud, you no longer can. The, the billable hour does not fit into this model because working on the cloud is about being as efficient as possible, trying to do things as quickly as possible, but still, you know, not lose, uh, don't, where you're still producing at a high, you know, valuable content. You're still producing uh, customer service at high level, but just maybe removing some of those extra redundant uh, processes and systems and, and tasks that you have to do, which makes it a little bit more efficient, which then you can produce something quicker, moves, and which allows you to take on more work. You provide more value to your client and you, your profit margin grows a little bit more. The billable hour doesn't fit into that because the billable hour is just you have a certain amount of hours and that's where you go. And so with, with the cloud-based uh, firms, there's move towards incentivizing based on turnaround time. So how quick did it come in? Did it go out? Okay, let's take a look at that. And let's take a look at it next year. And is it more or less? And why? And did you, get, did you turn it around quicker? Great. Or maybe do a metric on their customer service. So you, you sent a, a survey to your client after everything. Hey, how do we do? And then you rank that and see, okay, they got two stars. They got three stars. And maybe they've got five stars on every single one. And hey, that means their clients are happy. And they're happy because they're because you're empowering them to build better relationships with these clients. So they feel closer with them. They feel more invested as the company goes, as, as their client grows, and they feel more invested as the company grows. Technology. So for us, we need to always be trying to achieve process mastery. This is a circle. Why is it a circle? Because it's a never ending process. Once you have a process down, you always need to go back and evaluate it. Make sure, is it working the way it's supposed to? Is it providing the value it's supposed to? You always want to make sure to, to revisit it because there's always new solutions coming out. There's new tech that could come out that could help you. There's you know, different things that could come out that, that are out there. Maybe somebody did it a different way and you're like, I didn't think about that. And then, oh, this is great. It's an ongoing process. That's why it's a circle. And the good thing is there are plenty of resources available for adoption. So Zero itself realized that, you know, they, they wanted to provide more value to their bookkeepers, to their community. And they created what they call these app playbook series. So what these playbook series, these app playbook series are is they went and they, they talked to business owners that are using Zero. They talked to accountants, bookkeepers within the community that are using it and, and figured out exactly what are the top apps for each industry. So if you want to get into construction, if you go to the playbook, it'll tell you the top apps that companies are using right now. That way you can have a, a, a head start on where to start researching these applications and how they work. Same thing with professional services. You want to work with professional service firms? Okay, these are the apps that, are, that the top people are using. And again, it starts you on the guide. It condenses that big 800 plus, uh, 800 plus uh, marketplace down to a specific few that you can just go in 
you know, start talking to people and figure it out and uh, good to go. Then you can make that, okay, make, then you can move into, let me we'll start seeing if we can get some of our clients on here, start using them and talk to them about how it can help them. Senior account managers. So for those of you guys that, uh, there are several cities in the US that have senior account managers on hand. Here in Houston, we're lucky to have Jacqueline Velez and uh, Daniel Gallagher on our, on our team here, and they have just been amazing. They've built a great community and they're a great resource to help. For some of you guys that maybe don't have senior account managers in person, you have one that you can talk to, and they're there for whatever you need. Anytime you have a problem, anything, reach out to them. They're great that their whole job is to make sure that we we use zero and we make sure that we're happy with it. Because if we're not happy with something or something's going on, we don't get something, you know, that's what they're there for. Zero support is 24 seven guys. You send them an email, they respond pretty quickly with an answer. And so far I've had nothing but good things to talk about zero support. And then there's zero central, which is a big database of articles and, and, and discussions about just about everything. I feel like you can go in and search and, and, figure out, okay, how to do this and how to do that. And, and I'm sure one has, someone has asked it and it's been, it's been great. You know, uh, it, it's a good resource to have. Very good resource to have. So understanding some of these tools and what they're used for and everything. So this right here, guys, this is kind of a, a small snapshot of some of the stuff we use internally for my firm. We're a Microsoft heavy office, so we use 365 for a lot of things. Um, we've got teamwork for our project management system. Hubdoc, guys, Hubdoc has been great, has been an amazing, it's really helped us to, to really step our game up with our clients and everything. Uh, same thing with Fathom, uh, reporting, practice ignition for our proposals. We've got Gusto, guys, Gusto, our payroll software provider has been tremendous, they've been great, and they've got a great team over there that's really helpful. And Tax Planner Pro, for our uh, tax plans, for our tax plans that we have with our clients and making sure that they're they're uh, making their estimated tax payments and make sure that you know everything is up to par. And Zapier, 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 however you say it. Again, that's the connector. That connects some of these uh, applications that maybe don't connect with each other specifically. That'll connect for them. And then we have just a bunch of random apps. And you can see here, guys, they, this is just a small amount of what's available out there for you. And there are so many different industries, industry specific. So I know Deputy is a great uh, for restaurants or anybody with um, re restaurants and retail with, with scheduling and, and trading shifts and time entry and things like that. I know Deputy is a good one to use vend uh, from what I hear I don't I don't have any clients with inventory but I hear it's a very good tool for inventory and, and yeah I mean like I said there 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 are so many out there you can go to the app marketplace and just get overwhelmed I know I do sometimes I go in there and I kind of go down that that rabbit hole of okay this is where we're at and this is kind of how it's going <laughs> so our change management plan so we talked about you know all the tools and everything now we're going to talk about actual the, the the plan itself so communication plan Setting deadlines, guys. Communicating those hard deadlines that you want to have. Using messaging applications like Slack or Microsoft Teams or Teamwork Chat, things like that internally where you guys can maybe step away from communicating through email. Because uh, let's be real, emails get lost. I know sometimes I lose emails. You know, uh, not necessarily with clients, but maybe you'll send me something or not necessarily that I lose it, but I may forget it or, or oh, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Where the chat function is kind of immediate right in front of you. It's either on your phone or on your desktop. And making sure that you specify the new roles, where where your team is going to fit into their new roles, the again, utilizing their strengths, where they're going to fit in communicating what the new role is, what the expectation of the new role is, and make sure they understand what has to be done and preparing them for success, not just throwing them like, here, here's the role and 
that's it. No, making sure that they're prepared and, and they understand their new role. Process mapping, guys. Mapping out these processes. I know we were talking about that. And so this is a quick map of how uh, we onboard our uh, new clients. So we've got a client lead come in. We input into our CRM. As you follow it, we get all set up the meeting, create the proposal, start the process. And then right when we start the onboarding process, that's where we use Zapier to connect. It, it, it triggers those four different action items to happen. And then we can close out the lead and you know they're they're a client at that point lucid chart is a great software that you can use to use these um mapping these uh to create these process mapping tools you know these processes for yourself so you can have a visualization of what it is how you operate you know the life cycle of a client from beginning to end so we use lucid chart extensively we love it and it's yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good it's a good system and then training 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 is very important guys you can adopt all these systems and get everything going and then if you're not properly or, or if you guys aren't properly trained up or if your staff's not properly trained up then it's a it can be a recipe for for disaster or it's not necessarily a recipe for disaster but it can definitely create some road bumps along the way that's why training is very important you know we we as tax preparers we we make sure to go to our cpes and check out our seminars on the new tax laws to stay up to date and everything and it's kind of similar here you may not learn tax law but you're learning how to work these systems and the best way to use them to provide that value to your clients training and training and then our sponsorship plans so making sure we understand who is in charge of what role what the responsibilities are and what needs to be done during tr the transition process so we want to make sure to let people know that uh if the if, if again if you have somebody that's very tech savvy and they want to take on maybe the paper moving up transitioning from paper to paperless Make sure they understand what their roles, what's expected out of them, and, and make sure that they're empowered to know, hey, you got this, you can do this, but but that there's a plan in place, because if you just kind of winging it, it it's going to make it a lot harder. You know, we need to make sure we have structured plans of due dates and deadlines and everything. That way, everybody's on board, and everybody understands, and leading through change. Higher leadership should be the first to adopt the change and encourage everyone to do so because if not it can lead to imminent failure so if you have partners in your firm you need to make sure that everybody's on board because with you guys on board that's going to send that communication down to the staff that they need to be on board and then those and then they'll get on board a lot quicker these grassroots movements uh where maybe staff starts to do some of this stuff and, and, and leadership looks up works sometimes but that's only if leadership is actually willing to look and, and, and listen so that's why i, I want to remind you that you know keep one keep an open mind and two if you're going to do this you need to lead through change so you need to be the the biggest advocate the loudest voice for it make sure everybody knows this is our vision this is what we want to do this is how it's going to happen Okay, and uh, we're gonna take a quick uh, we'll take a quick break for some questions if we've got any. Uh, I see we've got two people on, and I think it might be uh, us watching it. So uh, if we have any questions, we'll take a quick break. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that, that's probably us watching it. Okay, okay, cool. And then we'll kind of keep going again, guys. I want to make it. Uh, if y'all do have questions, once we post this up, let us know. Uh, please put them in the comments. I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on the comments. I'll make sure to answer every question you have. And uh, again, whatever you guys need from us, uh, for me, if you, whatever questions you have about this, please feel free to reach out because I, I get, I love talking about this stuff. So before we go, what is, what is the cloud adoption? You know, so there is a shift in this industry, kind of to recap what we talked about. There is a shift in this industry to move to cloud technologies, adopting the cloud and everything. And in order to make that as seamless as possible, we need to understand how to adapt. 
and manage change. And we need to stay current with technology. We need to make sure that, we, you know, that that's the whole circle process mastery of making sure that we're always reviewing our processes. It's never, there's no, there's no stop on it because there's always something new. We need, and, and for us to be able to compete and provide more value to our clients, we need to make sure that we're fluid and we're able to adapt with the new technology that's coming out and with new trends that are coming out as well. So what's our next step, guys? Develop a plan, utilizing change management. Analyze your current state. Draw that map out. Create that vision. Put that on paper. Have that conversation with your, with your staff. And be like, hey, I want to do this. What is this going to look like? And then start reaching out. Reach out to people that can help you make that come true. Reach out to vendors. Reach out to everybody. That way, we can, that way you, can, you can, again, get that vision create the map out your processes, create your processes and, and, and get going. So that way you guys can work from the cloud and no longer having to be stuck, you know, maybe working at your office. And if you enjoy that, that's great. But for me, I love working from my office, but I like the flexibility of being able to work from anywhere. You know, this is something that anybody can do y'all. It, it's just a matter of getting the plan started. And, and again, having those conversations, reaching out to colleagues, seeing what's working for them. Because I guarantee you, working on the cloud has revolutionized my firm. It transformed it just 100% for the better. And it allows you to put family first, which to me is the most important thing. So I can work, spend time with my daughter, and then work a little bit more in the afternoon, wake up, spend some time with her in the morning, and, and I still don't miss out on that family time. All right, I just want to say thank you guys. We've got my information down there. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, ZTX Advisors, LinkedIn, look, Jay Zavala03. And we just want to say thank you to Zero. And I want to let you guys know that I will be at the Latino Tax Fest. I'll be speaking on behalf of Zero about automation. So, kind of piggybacking on this, this was more of a guide how to transition to the cloud. We're going to talk a little bit more about automate, automating a couple items and automations and things like that and what that looks like during uh, and i'll be doing that in english and spanish during the latino tax fest so come out reach out i'll be at the zero booth i'll be at the gusto booth i'll be at the practice ignition booth so if you see me guys say hi reach out i would love to meet every every one of y'all so thank you and uh yeah thank you, uh, so. thank you for your time jose yeah no. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, anybody watching, you haven't gotten your ticket yet. It's uh, it's like four weeks away, and and this year we're gonna stop selling selling tickets. So we're probably not gonna sell them for around three weeks more. Okay, so yeah, yeah. guys, get your ticket if you need to, because uh, from what I've seen and from what I've heard, it's a lot of fun. You know, it, and I'll just tell you this: my first conference was Zero Con last week, and it was great. And, and not to go to a conference surrounded by by mi gente. I mean, what better what better thing is there, you know? Yeah, well, what else do you want? <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome, Jose. Well, I'll see you in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah sounds yeah, good, awesome. man. So, all right, guys. Y'all have a good day. Bye, bye everyone.